Hello, Africa. The moment we've all been waiting for. Season 3 is premiering today. And I'm so happy that you followed all the conversations on the various platforms on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. Most of you have been very chatty and have been engaging us all through this time. And we want to say a very big thank you. I am so excited to be back here again to talk to you every evening. The good thing now is that because you actually rated us well, we have been moved from uh, 4 p.m. on Tuesdays to 8 p.m. peak time thanks to you. So from today and onwards, you're going to be seeing me on your screens every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Thank you very much once again. So um, I really missed you and I know you also missed me too because it all showed in our conversations over the social media. Well, today is an exciting day across the world and something really wonderful is being celebrated. We are going to talk more about it, but before we do that, I'd like us to take some messages from our sponsors. And first on the list is Chana Sheto. Chana Sheto is your number one pepper sauce. It's your number one choice when it comes to black pepper sauce. Chana Sheto is not just regular Sheto, it is Sheto with difference. Shita with tongues of shrimps and herrings with a great taste. I'm smiling because I have actually tasted it and it tastes so good. Chana Shito, food just got tastier. You can find Chana Shito at Max Mart, Garden Mart and Frames Oil Mart at Manette. For bulk purchase, call 024444-8180 or 024097-4461. And follow them on all social media platforms. It is Insurance Month here at Global Media Alliance Broadcasting Company, and we would like you to engage with us on everything you need to know about insurance. We live in a world of unforeseen circumstances and situations that are sometimes beyond our control. In extreme emergencies, we can lose the breadwinner of the home, assets, and properties. Is insurance a mitigating factor to these risks? Is there a need to insure your life, properties, and assets? Join all our brands, YFM, Happy FM, and ETV Ghana in the month of August as we discuss insurance in all forms. What insurance policies are available in Ghana and what need you do to get it solved if you have problems? your claims, and all other insurance matters. For inquiries and sponsorship, call or WhatsApp 020-222-2095 or 024-288-4571. The GMABC Insurance Month is proudly brought to you by Holland. Holland Insurance, and that's that purple color. When you move in town and you see that very beautiful purple color and insurance written all over it it's all about Holland and Holland is going to be taking us through a lot of the conversations around insurance this time around I have not forgotten my hydration partner Voltic 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 and Voltic remains the champion when it comes to water because recently it won the water of the year Congratulations once again to Voltic and Voltic is interested in the environment and it says you should twist recycle and just enjoy your Voltic. And they used to say initially that when you want to drink water, don't say water, say you want to take Voltic. And Voltic says naturally, naturally. So um, we're going to be taking you now to the 60 second segment where we're going to be giving you an update about things happening in Ghana and across the entire world. When we return, I will be introducing our guests for today. Do stay tuned. New KNUST Vice Chancellor promises to make school globally competitive. The new Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Rita Akosia Dixon, says she aspires to make the university globally competitive in science and technology under her leadership. As first woman vice chancellor of the university, Professor Dixon assumed office on August 1st as the university's 11th vice chancellor. Speaking at her investiture, 
She noted that she is committed to making the institution internationally visible under her tenure. She also added that in the wake of coronavirus pandemic, where virtual learning can be overemphasized, she is set to introduce electronic learning strategies to ensure seamless academic work all year round. A KN University feedback app, KFA, will be developed to enhance feedback provision from all staff, students and other stakeholders, in addition to one for the student support services, SSS, she added. A Tama Magistrate Court on Monday, August 3rd, 2020, ordered that the 28-year-old mother who allegedly murdered her two children in Tama should undergo a psychiatric examination to ascertain her mental stability. Suspect Ebubia, whose plea was not taken after she appeared in a court presided over by Mrs. Akosia Anochua Ejapon, was also remanded into police custody after a provisional charge of murder was read. Inspectors Emmanuel Kleku Mensa prosecuting told the courts that on July 30th, 2020, at about 7.30 hours, the Tama Regional Criminal Investigations Department had information that two children were found dead at Manhen, Tema. The bodies were sent to the police hospital morgue for preservation and autopsy. The case was adjourned to August 17th, 2020. Start thinking outside the box, Akofa Ejiani to filmmakers. Actress Akofa is urging movie makers to be a little more creative with production and distribution if they have the industry's growth at heart. Speaking on Joy FM Showbiz A to Z program on Saturday, she admitted that the movie industry is suffering, but with the rise of digital platforms, filmmakers can take advantage of them to sell movies. We have to start thinking outside the box. You need to sit down, think, and and act smart. Akofa Ejiani told George Quay, host of the show. She urged her colleagues to learn from other creative arts persons who are exploring virtual shows to also make money, especially in this COVID-19 times. Hello everyone, you're welcome back to the African Women's Voices Show, the show that tackles issues pertaining to women as they contribute to national development. Uh, another sponsor of ours is Abby Bite Catering Services. She has really refreshed both the guests and um, the crew here. And the food is really delicious. You need to look out for Abby Bite. Find her on Instagram and put that order across to her for your weddings, for your traditional marriages, for naming ceremonies and whatever it is, look for Albi Bite Catering Services. Thank you so much. All right, we're going into the conversation for the day and um, today is being celebrated across the entire world, um, breastfeeding. It's all about Breastfeeding Week 2020. And on the show today, we want to also join the rest of the world to celebrate, you know, this day. But you need to be told about what the statistics are saying about breastfeeding. And uh, right now, it's going to be put on your screen so that you get to understand what the situation is about breastfeeding. Well, we've been told by the World Health Organization that data suggests that for mothers who fail to breastfeed, they are likely to experience premenopausal breast cancer, retained gestational weight gain, ovarian cancer, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome. So it means that you better your chances if you get involved in breastfeeding. So if you don't have a child right now and you hope to have a child in future, engage in breastfeeding. If you have a child right now and you, or you've not started, please engage in breastfeeding. So today, to talk to us about how not to find ourselves in the situation or as part of what has been said in the data provided right now, we have a specialist here, a nurse, and she is a speci specialist when it comes to pediatrics, and uh, she's coming from the Children's Hospital, as we all popularly know it. Uh, sometimes we call it the Louis Marie. Princess. Princess Louis Marie. Princess Marie Louis. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, that's what the name actually is. But interestingly, mm -hmm. we all just across the country call it the Children's Hospital and we feel good about it. So she's here and sh her name is Helen. She's going to be taking us through the conversations around breastfeeding. Helen, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. All mm -hmm. right. So could you please tell the audience again who you are and what hospital you're presenting? Okay. So I am Helena Afo from, I'm Helena Afo, 
a nurse specialist pediatrics in pediatrics and I'm coming from Princess Marie Louise Hospital mm -hmm. so that is where I work and I've worked there for more than a decade wow <laughs> so when it, be, when it comes to breastfeeding she's got a lot of ideas and experiences she's going to be sharing with us and she's going to be training us and retraining us even if we've been engaged in breastfeeding okay so let's just ask the most basic question mm -hmm. what would you say is breastfeeding so breastfeeding basically is the natural way or the art or process of feeding an infant with breast milk from birth to the time the infant is being weaned. So basically that is breast, uh, breastfeeding. And when we um, look at breast milk, it is basically um, a fluid that is being secreted from the breast. And it consists of two parts. So we have the fore milk and then the hind milk. So the fore milk is the feed that comes at the beginning of uh, the process of feeding and it is gray in color and it is rich in vitamins lactose and then water oh, okay i just want to remind uh, our audience that the reason why we've really chosen to tackle this topic is because this week is known across the entire world to be breastfeeding breast week mm -hmm. so that's the reason why we are having to take time to tackle this conversation so you need to sit closer to your TV set and take your pens or pencils and write down whatever information you're going to be getting today from Helen Affle. Okay, okay so let's continue. So you talked about the fact that um, the breast milk contains a lot of vitamins, proteins, yeah. and nutrients that help the baby to develop and grow well. Okay, fine. I think that part is really basic. But the thing is, um, we have a lot of mothers who do not feel comfortable to breastfeed because we hear stuff about... Um, having sores on the breast and maybe discomfort on the back, neck pain and all of that. So what would you say about these fears that people have got? Do they really have what happens when they get the sores or do these sores actually happen? Yes, it's, it does happen mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I would also say that we have to encourage all mothers to breastfeed even though they are sores but then there are ways that you or there are remedies that can keep these kind of things. So basically what I would advise is that if, even if there is sore on the nipple, what you can do is that you still have to continue breastfeeding, but then you will start from the other breast which is not affected, uh -huh. so that when the baby empties that, and then you place the baby on the affected part, the part that has the sore, the baby would just take a little and be full. Okay. And again, you can also apply warm compresses to the area. Could you explain what you mean by these warm compresses? Uh -huh. So basically you can get a, 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 a towel and then you warm water, you place it on, on the warm water and make sure that the towel becomes very warm. Then you place it on the nipple. Okay. So that's also aid in healing. Okay. Another thing is you can also express, that is you press the breast and then the milk that comes out, you just leave drops under it on, on the breast. And when it dries up, it also helps. So you mean the breast milk can also yes, you yes. Know, help in yeah. getting the sores to be healed? Yes. Wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Okay, but if you're having to express, there's a chance that blood could be mixed up in it. Oh? No. Is that, there's no, no chance about no, that. Yeah. Blood will not get mixed up yes, in it. Please. Because you're not going to hold on to where the sore is. Normally, when you're expressing the breast milk, you have to... Um, target the area where the breast milk is being stored. That is um, around the areola. So the areola is the darkened part of the breast. So at that part, um, the breast milk is stored beneath the areola. So we have something we call the ampulla, which stores the breast. Mm. So basically when you are expressing, you just hold on to where the darkened area and not the nipple. Okay. So there is n no chance that there will be blast blood mixing with the the breast milk okay all right so now that it's the whole idea is to get the milk to the baby yes some people will choose not to actually use the the breast itself to feed they will prefer to express and put in a bottle is there also problems with something like this must it always come from the natural source yes it must come from the natural source, source. 
Why? Do we have a chance of infection or why is it that it's best if it's coming from the source? Uh -huh. So that you don't contaminate it, as you said, because we don't want to risk the uh, baby's food okay. with any kind of infection. So you can either use the breast pump, as you earlier indicated, in expressing the breast, or you can also use go manually by using your hand. Mm. So you make sure you wash your hands. The, the cup or the thing that you are going to use is also washed, sterilized, before you even start what, expressing the breast milk. Okay, so part of the reason why I had to ask if the baby has to latch on the breast mm -hmm. or you have to express is because mm -hmm. sometimes a lot of young women do not want to breastfeed because they fear that their boobs may get flabby and no longer, you know, mm -hmm. very attractive as it used to be. So uh, does it work better if you have to express in terms of having to keep your boobs looking still, you know, nice yes, and attractive? <laughs> Research has so shown that it is not about breastfeeding the baby that makes your boobs become flat or okay. flabby. But there are other um, reasons why it does happen. Okay. So such as aging, if you are on certain medication, or if you have undergone set surgery and all that. But breast milk, breastfeeding will not lead to um, your the boobs. The flabbiness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, ladies, we need to put that in mind and uh, check it. So you can now freely breastfeed your baby and not fear that you're going to end up having your, your boobs looking very okay. flabby and uh, flat. So you still maintain the attraction and everything even after breastfeeding because it's been confirmed right now that that's not the case. All right, um, part of the problem that some people also face is they are very interested in having to breastfeed because they have all this information that you just put out there mm -hmm. that it contains all the essential nutrients mm -hmm. that you need. It's got healing properties that can even heal you as a mother mm -hmm. when you've got sores. They know all of that. But unfortunately, when they give birth to their babies, milk is not flowing. So okay. what causes this situation? How come some mothers have their babies and it takes some time before the milk begins to flow? Okay, it depends on the mode of, of delivery. Uh -huh. So basically those who deliver, via, um, deliver by themselves tend to lactate earlier. Okay, so natural who, birth. Yeah, natural birth. Okay. Than those who undergo caesarean section. Okay. And then because most of the mothers might be, might be like, let me put it this way, might be very sick. So they don't initiate breastfeeding early. It is recommended by the WHO that breastfeeding must start at least within the first hour after delivery. So when there is a delay in initiate, initiating of the breastfeeding, then it also leads to the mother not lactating well. Okay. The other thing has to deal with the position and attachment, okay. how they put the baby to breast, especially with the first-time mothers. They have difficulty putting the baby to breast. Okay. Uh -huh. So if the baby is not placed well or is not positioned well and the baby doesn't get that attachment, it becomes difficult for the baby to suckle. Okay. So basically, the physiological... If the baby is not properly po placed, po positioned, yes, positioned, then they don't suckle well, well yeah. and you also don't get to lactate, lactate properly, properly because baby is not suckling uh -huh. well. And that is All where right. you also develop the sore because when they are sucking on the nipple, they, de they develop the sore and then they lose interest in, in uh, breastfeeding. breastfeeding. Okay. Mm. All right. You know what? I'd like you to show us how well to position the baby. So we're going to be doing that right after this commercial break. Do not go anywhere. She's going to practicalize how we should hold the baby and breastfeed properly. We will be right back. You're welcome back. Just before we went on the commercial break, we were going to practicalize how to hold the baby up and then breastfeed properly to avoid sores and discomfort for mother. Some of us have been complaining of back pains and neck pains and even baby not latching well. Today, Helen is going to be teaching us how to actually handle baby in this process. So Helen, over to you. Okay, so um, with proper positioning and attachment, of the baby to the breast. 
First of all, you need a comfortable chair, like the chair I'm sitting in right now. Okay. You will notice that my back is very uh, is straight. And then you would make sure that your, foot, your feet are flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. So in cases where you notice that your, your feet are hanging, then you, you need a stool okay. to put your legs on so that you'll be more comfortable. Then you would now take your baby, make sure the other hand, the hand of the baby goes behind, under your armpit. Under your armpit. Okay. And then the neck of your baby, it's on the crotch of your arm. Okay. Then you will notice, um, then you turn the baby towards you, making sure that the baby's abdomen or the belly is touching yours. Okay. And then you slip your hand here and then you hold the buttocks okay. area so that the baby will just turn automatically to where the breast is. Okay. Then you just take off your breast from your brassiere and then straight you would have to stimulate the baby first. So you can just rub the nipple on okay, the lower so lip. you need to stimulate the baby. Yeah. What does this stimulation do? Gets baby ready? Yeah, gets baby ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that the baby can open the mouth like a yawn so that it will cover the areola. That is the dark area of the breast. And that needs that that is where the breast milk is stored. Mm -hmm. So after you are done stimulating the baby and the baby opens the mouth like a yawn and then caps it around where the areola is, then you will notice that your baby will start what? Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding. Okay. Will start will start sucking your breasts. Okay. So you notice that you are comfortable and your back is not aching you and the baby is also what's comfortable. Okay. So when you are breastfeeding, you can also look into your baby's face. Whilst your baby also look at you, you smile, and then that is where you start bonding. Okay, so you need to actually communicate, communicate with, the with the baby. Yeah. Wow. So this is one way. And if you notice that um, you are still not comfortable, you can also use a pillow. Okay, I was to going to ask you what this was yeah. for. All right. To support the baby, so that at least the baby will be firm and will not slip and fall okay and when you are lying down uh, let's say you are sick or you are in bed you can also put the baby to breast by lying down and you support yourself with pillows then you also um, still um, make sure the baby's mouth caps the areola area and then you can breastfeed okay. and when they are twins you can also use the v hold position mm -hmm. where you can have one here and then one also here. Wow. And then <laughs> so the it's actually two. possible to breastfeed yes. two babies at the same time? Yes. But most of the times we prefer breastfeeding one at a time. At a time. Okay. Mm. But you can do the V-hood and then the other one also, you can also position the baby this way. Make sure the, the neck and then the head is resting in your arm. And then... You bring the baby this way, and then the baby uh, can also suckle. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's why I actually see sometimes in other parts of Africa, yeah. you see that the mothers are backing the baby, baby and somehow they make the baby <laughs> turn in certain <laughs> ways, and they are breastfeeding. I used to think it was dangerous. It means that if they position the baby very well, very well baby but will be not fine. at the back, but you can just um, let the baby be by your side this way, and then you breastfeed. Oh, wow. Interesting. I'm happy you were able to raise the case of twins because I was coming to ask you a question around mm -hmm. them. Okay, so sometimes so we believe that maybe the mother is not able to produce enough milk to take care of two babies at a time. So it means that for twin babies, we have to introduce the formula because mommy has to be able to rest or mommy cannot produce enough. Is it possible for mommy to be able to, you know, actually have enough breast milk to, to feed Two babies? Yes, it is possible. The mother would have to eat well. When I say eating well, it doesn't mean the mother would have to eat a lot of food, but nutritious food, food. taking a lot of fluids, drink a lot of water, so that the mother herself will be well hydrated. Okay. So you can put one baby to one breast and then make sure that the baby um, empties one breast. Then you put the other one at the other breast so that the baby also what empties the other one. Okay. So somebody is going to ask, ask um, how do you know the breast is empty? 
will baby begin to cry or would you feel it inside of you You'll that this feel breast it. is You'll empty? You will feel that your breast is actually light. Okay. It's no more heavy. Then you notice that um, the breast is empty. It's empty. Yeah. Okay. The reason why we're asking this question is because some people actually feel the engorgement of their breast. Yes. Like they could feel it getting really hardened up if a lot of milk is engorged, engorged there. Yeah. And then for some people, they don't feel any hardness. Mm. I mean, it, it still feels soft and, and, you know, just like normal breast, but there's a lot of milk in it and it flows. So in cases like this, you still feel within you that it's empty and it's time if, for you to change baby if from one breast, breast to the other? If the breast is engorged, that one is a different issue. Okay. So with an engorged breast, then it means the mother has delayed in breastfeeding, breastfeeding. or has missed the sections of breastfeeding. In actual sense, the baby is... You need to breastfeed the baby every two to three hours. Okay. In situations where you miss to uh, feed the baby, then it means you have to express. Maybe the baby is asleep and you don't want to worry the baby. When it gets to that two or three hours that you are supposed to feed the baby, you have to actually do what express. Okay. And then most, some mothers would also leave their breasts hanging and it becomes very full without putting on bra. Okay, and so I was coming to that. So what do braziers do for you as a breastfeeding mother? Okay. What role does it play? So it supports the breasts. Okay. It doesn't prevent the breast, uh, the flow of breast, but it supports the breast. So it doesn't mean that you should go in for any bra. You, we have a special The nursing bra. bra. Yes, that is the maternity bra. Because that can, that can support your breast. Okay. Some people would still use their normal uh, um, brazier when they were not lactating okay. and you notice that it is too tight that one it causes blockage in the ducts of the breast okay. which prevents uh, milk from flowing. from flowing so you have to get an appropriate bra for your breast that can really support the breast Okay. All right. So you were saying something about leaving the breasts, you know, to just drop like that without wearing the bra. Mm. What does it do? What's the effect of leaving the breasts just to, to lie around like that? Does it, what does it do? It makes it to get engorged? It's, sometimes it, it makes it engorged because the, the, maybe after breastfeeding, the breast milk will rush or the breast milk will rush into the breast, getting ready for the next feed. Okay. And then your breast is just hanging and looking at how heavy the breast has become like it pulls on your chest okay. and then you notice that you are feeling pain and all that. Okay. I one witness a mother who left after delivery, left the breast just like that without putting on brazier for from morning to afternoon and her breast became engorged. Okay. So she was crying and then she called me, so I asked her, do you have a brazier that could fit those uh, breasts? And she said, yes. And I said, put on the brazier. And she noticed that the pain has reduced. And when all she that. wore the brazier, yes. you know, she got some kind of relief. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's really wonderful. So uh, still around getting um, to understand our breast and uh, breastfeeding better, what happens to the baby when breast milk is not flowing right after birth because we know that it's been preached that we should exclusively breastfeed, breastfeed yeah. our children and they are crying because they need to eat and there's no milk flowing so what's the advice what should you do do you have to wait for three days one week because breast milk is not flowing what do we do <laughs> and just I would like to know what okay. to do so basically within the first days of um, a lactating mother's um, life, they get worried and anxious, as you said. But then you also have to encourage them to still breastfeed. Okay. Because breast milk, if you initiate breastfeeding early, the milk will start flowing. So in as much as the breast milk is not coming, you still have to put the baby to breast. We still have to? Put the baby to breast. Okay. Because when you put the baby to breast, it stimulates the nipple impulses are sent to the brain and then now the breast milk starts what's coming. Okay. So it is very, very important that you still have to encourage the, the mother to breastfeed, even though the baby becomes frustrated and starts crying. You just have to put the breast in there yes. and just hope that Another the breast flows. Oh, it, it will come. <laughs> okay, and we're going to be going quickly for our health tip. When we come back, 
the nurse is trying to avoid what I'm trying to say, but I know you mothers are insisting. You want me to ask that question, right? I'm going to ask that question, but let's go for this health tip. When we come back, we're going to continue with the conversation. Just stay tuned. And you're welcome back to the studio. This is the African Women's Voices Show, and we are celebrating uh, glo uh, with our global friends. Today is part of the celebration about Breastfeeding Week 2020. So this entire week is Breastfeeding Week, and African Women's Voices Show wants to identify with other people across the entire world who are celebrating this day. And it's really been exciting here. Helen has taken us through some tips and how, what we need to know about breastfeeding and how to do it better. Before we went on the break, I was asking her what a mother should do if the breast milk is not flowing. And Helen has been dodging that question. <laughs> and you all know the reason why she's dodging it, because for those of you who have had children before, you know that they'll continue to tell you that you should continue breastfeeding. Hold on. Um, even if it's taking a day or two, the baby is fine. Baby has taken a lot of food inside of mm -hmm. you, so it's working. Uh, the baby is crying. Just sing for the baby. But you know it's really frustrating. So, Helen, even if you don't want to tell us, this is <laughs> what we do. We actually mix the formula and we give it to the baby, at least to soothe the baby and make the baby feel okay and sleep. When the milk begins to flow, we go back to our breastfeeding exclusively, just as was shared in our health tip before, uh, when we went on the break. The health tip said that WHO has advised that we breastfeed our children exclusively for six months and up to the age of two years. So when you introduce solid food after six months, you still have to continue breastfeeding your baby until the age of two. Helen, this is one question I'm really happy to ask you right now, and I know that some of our uh, people in the audience also will also want to have an idea around what I'm saying. I know I breastfeed for two years for all my children, but the thing is, a lot of people around you make you feel so guilty and tell you that you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Why would you breastfeed a child for two years? What's happening? Afrano or no moja? There's nothing inside of you again. It's not advisable. Once you've given your child breast milk three months, even that six months is too much. If you must go six months, fine. But after then, they should stop. There's no need for the two years. Please, as the person who's a specialist in this field, could you advise us on exactly what it means to breastfeed your child exclusively for six months and to continue breastfeeding till the age of two after you've introduced solid food? Okay, it is very, very important that you continue to breastfeed your infants even after you have introduced the complementary feed. Because within the first six months, the child gets, let's say, 100% of the nutrients that uh, the child needs from the breast milk. Mm -hmm. So when you continue with the breast milk, it means that after six months, the child is getting like half, like 50% of what's the nutrients that the child needs from the breast milk. Okay. Yeah, and, and from one year onwards, or from one year going, the child gets about um, one third of the, the nutrients. And it will amaze you that the breast milk keep on changing to adapt mm -hmm. to, to the, the need of, the, of child. The, the need of the child. So the child actually gets the nutrient that he or, um, he or she needs from the breast milk. So it means that uh, the child is not sucking blood out no, of you, the no, mother? No, no, not at all. The, ch the child is not sucking blood. Okay. And again, you know when they become active and all that, they need a break. Okay. So when you, take, when you pick them, let's say after a year, they would be moving around, um, um, running and all that. So they need a break. So it's just for them to 
um, when you pick them and then you start breastfeeding them, it's just like a break for them. And there and there too, you are also bonding. The child is also getting something like a, a pacifier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is also very yeah, good. Yeah, talking about pacifier, I realized that no matter what kind of pain the baby is going through, put in the nipple in his or her mouth out. and yeah. the pain disappears. Mm -hmm. so, so it really pacifies. Right, yeah. And I also had this experience where when the child is too thin, mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to eat any food. Yes. But because I was still breastfeeding, breastfeeding yes. I wasn't so scared mm -hmm. that the child wasn't eating because I knew that somehow the child was getting the nutrients she required right, because yeah. breastfeeding was, was ongoing. Yeah. So, I mean, for those of us who feel that we do not want to breastfeed till two years, these are some of the reasons why it is advised. But at any rate, people have to do it within their convenience. Mm -hmm. Some of you may say that you have to go to work and you don't come back. In my own case, yes, I was going to work. I wouldn't breastfeed the entire day, yes. My but baby. when I return, yeah. I make sure that I breastfeed yeah. the baby whenever I'm around until baby got to the age of two. It's been really wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so do you know what? It's time for us to be able to open the phone lines. We would like to hear your experience about breastfeeding or if you're somebody who is yet to start breastfeeding because you don't have children yet and you want to find out some things about breastfeeding, we are opening the phone lines right now for you to ask those questions around it. So we'll be going for a quick commercial break right now. When we return, we will be opening the phone lines. So please call in <laughs> to stay tuned. It's Breastfeeding Week 2020, and we are joining the rest of the world to celebrate this day on the African Women's Voices Show. I told you we're going to be opening up the phone line, so it's open right now. The number is on the screen, and I'm going to call it out. It is 0555 0555657278. Seven, eight. We need you to call into the program right now. So while we wait for the callers to come in to join us, um, I was going to ask you how best should we clean the nipple or the breast area? Because sometimes in the day, I mean, we do stuff, we clean, we wash, we still have to do our chores, even though we have a new baby. So how would you recommend that we keep the breast area clean to at least deter infection or to keep the baby safe? Okay, so basically what you can do is to maintain a very good personal hygiene. Okay. Such as changing your bra every day, changing your breast pad. Okay, so changing your bra, bra every, every day. day. And it's because sometimes the breast milk could get drained, drained into yeah. it. Okay. And then even if you use breast pad, you have to change it like three or four times. Okay, it has to be regular. Yeah. And then making sure you also take your bath. Okay, twice. I hear we have a caller right now. Hello? Good evening, and we have a gentleman calling. Thank you so much for calling in. What's your name, and where are you calling us from? Okay, I'm Ramzi. I'm Ramzi. I'm calling from Boche. Ramzi calling from Boche. Okay. Uh, so please go ahead with your question. Uh, there's this. Uh, I don't know. This for the first six months. For the very, for the very first six. Oh, we lost that call. Ramsey from Boche, could you call back again? Could you call again, please? Okay. All right. So you were saying that we need to change our bra yeah. every day. Every day. And then we should change the breast part regularly. Yes. And third, we need to take our bath, bath often. often. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. You know, sometimes we, the, you know, the trendy mothers, we also move about with our wipes. So whenever we want to breastfeed, we just get our wipes, you know, in cool and collected way, and then we wipe it and feel good about ourselves, and the place will be smelling really nice. What do you advise about that? Uh, I don't think it is necessary. Okay. Because it's not you don't necessary. Even, yeah. Okay. Wh why would you be saying that? Because you don't even know the chemicals that are in that wipes that you are using to clean your nipple area. Okay. 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 So if the baby sucks 
that chemical. So you baby will be ingesting a lot, a lot of, of these chemicals yeah. each time they have to breastfeed. Yes. And you mentioned that we need to breastfeed around two to, two three, to three hours. hours. Yes. Oh, wow. So in a day, for about eight times that the baby is going to be feeding, it means the baby will be ingesting mm -hmm. chemicals. chemicals. Whoa, <laughs> we never thought about it that way at all. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, I hear we have another caller. Hello. Hello, madam. Hi, please, what's your name and where are you calling us from? Please, I'm Hannah. I'm calling from Mampong. Mampong. Okay, talk okay. to us. Please, I gave birth in 2015. And the moment I start breastfeeding, I, think I don't feel well. I don't feel okay. Immediately, I start breastfeeding. But later on, I'm all, I become okay. Anytime I start breastfeeding, I feel, I feel that I'm not feeling well. And I want to ask what causes that thing. Okay. All right, so please, uh, um, she's going to take your answer right now. Okay, so okay. please address Thank it. You. Okay, Thank I you. want to find out from her, um, does she have any condition that is related to... Oh, she's even gone off. Yeah, but um, okay. we, she can uh -huh. still so hear I us. Want to f I want to find out if she has any uh, breast-related condition that makes her feel... I don't know why she's even saying that she... You know, sometimes for some people, they complain that they are feeling dizzy. Dizzy and all You know, that. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. or they feel nauseous. They want to, they feel like vomiting, vomiting. you know, when um, they are breastfeeding. So that could be part of the problem, problem. that they are facing. So, um, so you're trying to say that if there's already an existing, existing problem, condition, that could be what is in, in, inducing yes. that. And okay. then a lot of mothers also neglect themselves. They don't eat well. They don't eat well. They don't eat well. Because when you are breastfeeding, after breastfeeding, you even notice that you are, you are hungry. Okay. So you also have to take care of yourself by eating well, drinking a lot of water. But then if it's something that it's, has reoccurred several times, then I think the best thing for her is to report to the um, a nearest clinic okay. concerning that. All right. So uh, what we have to say to you right now is that we we really um, we are thinking that maybe there's already a condition that you need to talk to a doctor about because it's not normal for you to be feeling sick whenever you're breastfeeding. Okay. It means there's a condition that you may be aware of or maybe not be aware of. So you need to see a doctor, okay? And please, we would like to hear what your story is after you go to the doctor and we wish you well. All right. So hello, caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Rejoice from Tamale. Okay, hi. All the way from Tamale. All right, share your contribution or your question. Please, I would like to ask, is it normal for a pregnant woman breast to be coming out? I mean, the milk to be coming out. Okay, all right. Is it normal to have a pregnant woman, you know, lactating? Yes, some do yes. lactate. Okay. Even though they are pregnant, okay. it is normal. It is not a problem. Okay, so no fears, okay? It's normal for you to lactate if you're pregnant, okay? So it means that once baby arrives, you're not going to be part of the people who are afraid that, oh, my milk is not flowing. Your, your milk is already flowing, so baby will have enough to drink. All right? Okay. And we wish you well Thank and a safe delivery, much. okay? Okay. Thank okay. you. Bye. All right. I know a lot of calls, you know, uh, they're all pushing to get through. Um, um, we have one more question that we want to take and it's about burping the baby after feeding. Okay. Is it really important to burp a baby after feeding? Yes, it is very, very important that you burp your baby after feeding. Okay. Even after feeding the baby on one breast. Okay. So after you are done feeding the baby on one breast, before you put the baby to the other breast, you have to burp the baby. Okay. It's a way of bringing out, let's say, the, the, uh, let me use the layman term. Like the air. The air that they must have ingested Just while they are suckling. Suck, suckling. Okay. Uh -huh. So that it will create more space for them. To take more. more. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Helen. And we've really enjoyed this session about breastfeeding. And it has been Breastfeeding Week 2020. And uh, if you are breastfeeding, fine. If you are not breastfeeding and what we said today convinced you, well, we also say uh, we wish you well in this journey of breastfeeding your, your child. But we cannot leave you to go away like that. We've got something to present to you from Yamvita. Yamvita has a package here that is full of goodies. We want you to enjoy this package with your baby. Thank and you to very share, much. Um, 
the, the love that Yom Vita gives to all the babies. Yom Vita is actually giving to babies from the age of six months. Yom Vita believes in exclusive feeding from zero to six months. So the no baby can begin to take it after six months. Okay, so if you haven't tried Yom Vita, this is your time to try Yom Vita and you would really see that babies love it. You're also going to be getting something from Vortic, our sponsor, and Chana Sheto, the number one pepper sauce. And then um, you're also going to be getting something from Abi Bite. Albi is a caterer with a difference. So we said, look for Albi's Bite on Instagram. Follow her and place that order. If you want pastries, if you want rice, you want wache, what kind of food do you want? And what event is it? Albi's Bite will take care of you. So, uh, until next time, next week at 8 p.m., we'll be seeing you again. But the repeat broadcast of this show is going to be on Saturday at 12 noon. Bye-bye.